Our next speaker, Anil Dash, is, I think, uh, could be fairly described as a web native, a digital native. He's been blogging online since 1999, so he gets bragging rights. Uh, he was the chief evangelist for Six Apart, and he is now the founder of a very interesting new company called Expert Labs. And what Expert Labs is trying to do is, is bring the power of crowdsourcing expertise directly to institutions of government, like the White House and other government agencies. And so Anil is going to talk about startup.gov and how we can crowdsource policy. Morning. I do want to talk about this idea I'm going to call startup.gov, which is how do we bring startup principles uh, to the world of policy and governance. I actually, I should be clear, I don't actually care about how the internet can fix politics. I care about how it can fix governance. Um, and that's an important distinction to me because politics is not very compelling in the way that it's, it's done today. Uh, I also am very glad to be back at PDF. I was at the very first PDF, and back then we said New York was the most interesting startup community in the world. Now it's actually true, uh, and so it's even more exciting to talk about that. So um, if we ask this question of what would startups do, um, that seems almost at odds with the culture of what we know about policy making, especially in the federal government, which is primarily the context that I'm going to be talking about things. My background is in startups, and I knew nothing about the world of policy and governance when I started trying to see how could we help. And actually, how do you use your ignorance as an advantage? Well, that's actually one of the things that startups do most often. right? We frequently say, well, I don't know what the constraints are that everybody else had in the past, but I'm going to assume that I can solve this problem. And there are a bunch of other precepts that startups embrace that I think we can bring to bear in improving policy. The first is that idea of embracing constraints. Know what you don't know. Use your lack of resources as an advantage. Um, that seems very, very obvious to anybody that's working in a startup. It's completely unconventional to people that are looking at how do we make better policy decisions. Ask your friends. This, again, is something that's anathema, to use the social network and tap into it. Uh, in, in explicitly, if you're somebody that's making policy, is a little bit frowned upon and seen as a little bit weird and scary. Uh, but it's second nature in the startup world. Go where the people are. This is an obvious one. It ties into what Deanna is saying about inclusiveness. Um, instead of presuming that you know or having a closed door meeting with a half dozen uh, uh, hand-selected participants, go to where the people are that are having conversations about the topic you're creating policy about, and then iterate. And let me talk about what these principles mean actually in practice. Because these are scary, irrational things to do in the culture of policymaking that exists in Washington, D.C. today. Any of these ideas is going to get you kind of burned as a heretic. The good news is um, we're not part of the government at Expert Labs. So we are an independent nonprofit. Uh, we uh, actually technically are not a company, right? We're a nonprofit. We're part of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, which is the folks that publish the journal Science. What this means is we have enough breathing room that we can do experiments. This is the ultimate freedom. Startups fail all the time. They try things that might work, you learn from what worked, and you move forward. So what we're trying to do is bring the ability to improve policy making decisions uh, in an environment that is as experimental as a startup would be. And so we start with that idea of asking your friends. I don't need to preach about the benefits of crowdsourcing to everybody here, but I can show you one of those examples of how it can be counterintuitively valuable. For me, I needed to get a new phone a couple months ago. I asked my friends what kind of phone I should get. I am uh, lucky enough to have a fairly large uh, social network on Twitter, so the response I got uh, numbered in the hundreds. So we got lots and lots and lots of responses I was able to gather, and among those responses, one of them was somebody saying, here's information about which handsets in America put out the most radiation, and that was a link to a story that said, here's the details of how that works. Um, as well as the 10 best phones that put out the least amount of radiation. And we talk a lot about crowdsourcing as if it's a kind of mob rule thing. But this is actually more about making sure you capture the insights that you had no other way of capturing. And that is actually one of the things that is most flawed in our current process of policy making. When I want to make a decision about what phone to get, you would expect with the nerdy community of friends that I have that some are going to say Apple and some are going to say Google. But what I can have also is some people saying, look out for this, right? And these are the insights we have to have. Policymakers don't have these advantages. I have my own think tank. And if I can have this power, why can't a policymaker? And it's because it's too hard right now. 
right? They can't get the tools to do that kind of aggregation. So we say, what if we embrace that constraint and just give it to them? Now, because we're part of a science association and because we have the right arrangements, we can actually create open source technology that we called think tank, to make the analogy explicit, that lets you collect all of these responses on social networks and put them to use. Um, this project's being led by Gina Trapani, who founded uh, Lifehacker and is a really you know, extraordinarily experienced blogger, but has been crowdsourcing answers to questions for years, for half a decade, to share that knowledge. And if you think about what that function is of publishing those findings out to the world, that's a perfect pr predicate for being able to do the same thing for policymakers. And so when we see this ability to collect this information in that application called Think Tank, you think the place that they most would want to use it is where they're making the most important policy decisions. Because we have all these conversations about open government and everybody here is in favor of it and really excited that it happened, but we talk about it like it's something they're gonna do for us. And we have to stop asking the grocery store to throw our dinner parties, right? We do this ourselves. They can give us the raw materials, but these are the things that we have to empower ourselves to do. So we picked a project that had already been, you know, under the umbrella of open government uh, by the White House, but that we could champion at Expert Labs and amplify the message of and get more people to respond to. And this first experiment was part of the Grand Challenges Initiative that the White House had. This is a, um, a really, actually a really interesting program, which is to say uh, the president's going to identify grand challenges in science and technology that are going to lead to huge breakthroughs uh, for our whole uh, society, and that they'll also have spin-off benefits. And the, essentially the, the, the fundamental question they're asking here is what is a challenge that is as big and as important as going to the moon? and it's gonna yield as many benefits for society. And this is the kind of question that everybody can have a reasonable answer for. As part of a scientific society, we wanna encourage scientists to respond, but as citizens, we want everybody to respond. A six-year-old has a good answer about what's a big ambitious project that this country should be focused on in science and technology. So we embrace this question, and we encourage the White House to use the networks they already had to reach out on Twitter and to reach out on Facebook and say, this isn't merely going to be a broadcast medium. This is going to be a way to get feedback on an actual policy conversation. And this initially was going to start as a traditional process where they had from February until April an email uh, page that you would, you would link on, uh, to the email address on the page that they had for the program and email in your response. And we said, what if instead we go where the people are on these networks and let them respond in the context where they're getting messages from their friends and checking out cat pictures and all the other things they're gonna do. And by going where the people are, they were able to radically increase the number of people that responded. By looking at these networks not as one as Twitter or Facebook or email, but saying, put all these networks together and treat them as one whole network. Right? This is the smart thing to do, is to not be trying to divide everything, but to say the largest social network is the internet itself. And then, when you go back with a question like that, and you reach across to where the people are, and you try to reach them all equally, you get some amazing answers. This is a screenwriter in LA who said he wants to make a system uh, where every home in America can generate its own power. Uh, this is a, a programmer at Microsoft up in Seattle talking about energy independence. Uh, a guy in Colorado uh, talking about algal hydrogen production. He's a grad student. Um, this guy draws web comics, and he wants us to build space colonies. This is a woman in the hills of North Carolina who thinks we can make a device that you stare into that can uh, detect head trauma uh, in the battlefield or for athletes. This is a high school student who's saying he wants to replace all of his textbooks with uh, digital textbooks that not only can teach kids but learn from kids and get smarter over time. Now this is an idea the White House has been championing as well, but when he sees this on the final list of grand challenges that come out of the White House, this 17-year-old kid is gonna feel a much stronger sense of investment in a policy initiative that he otherwise wouldn't have known about if he hadn't just happened to have been browsing Twitter or Facebook at that point. And the big scary thing of, well, what happens when somebody says something off topic is not actually that scary. So John Cusack had his technology suggestion that the White House look into hot tub-based time travel <laughs> uh, because he had a film out at the time. And that's okay, right? If that's as scary and irrational as it gets, you're still doing something enormously valuable. And most importantly, over 2,000 people responded on these networks. And this is in the context where people, they usually get a few dozen emails. So we've radically increased the number of people responding. It's no longer a closed door meeting. And all we had to do was follow the principles that any startup would follow 
and getting innovation to happen. So the greatest thing about this is these tools like Think Tank are totally free and open source. We want every agency in the government to use it, but we want every private industry company to use it. We want individuals to use it. And the fun thing about open source is when you fix a bug in using these tools for your own organization, you're helping policymakers make better decisions too. So iteration going forward is that you can visit our site at expertlabs.org, get the data. We hope to run it through many eyes and get some great visualizations for it. Um, we all want you to start to think about what are the good ideas in that data set that came back, but also what are the ways that other policymakers should be using these tools going forward. Um, as you'd expect, Everything else that you can find out about our projects is completely free and open. You can visit the data itself. You can download the application and run it yourself. Um, we need your help. We desperately need your help. The great thing is you can be improving your own abilities to take advantage of startup principles while helping policymakers do that too. Thank you very much for your time.